Hello YouTube, and so I recorded a video of what I called a guide before going through all these weapons, but as I actually like watched it again, I didn't like what I was uh, doing in that previous video. In that previous video, I was really just telling you about why I put it in each tier. I didn't really tell you how to use it and use it really well. So this guide now, or this newly attached guide to that video, is going to actually tell you how to use these weapons like a professional and to the weapon's fullest ability, like how to use it. Now, I'm not gonna show you in-game clips of me doing all these things because that would take forever with all of these weapons. So if you wanna see how I use the weapons or how you know the top players use the weapons, come by to the stream and check it out, all right? So this is gonna be a long video because I'm actually gonna tell you why the weapon's good and then I'm actually gonna tell you how you have to use it or should know how to use it to be like that professional level with this weapon, all right? And whether or not you, sh you you'll know whether or not you should be using that weapon based upon you know what I tell you on how to use it, right? Some of these weapons take a lot more skill than others to use effectively, as in you might as well just use something else if you don't know how to use it a certain way, okay? So starting with the AWP. The AWP is the best weapon in the game, okay? It can kill someone in 0.5 seconds, essentially, if you are a master with it at any range. If you get headshot, body shot, but to be able to do that, you have to know how to quick scope, and that means like uh, there's many forms of quick scoping. The quick scope method you really have to know how to do is pretty much to call it black scoping. Like you're grabbing the op. Oh, I grab it this way, but you're grabbing the op and you're pulling trigger, but you're not actually looking through the scope. You can just kind of guess where the bullet will be, so you grab fire really quick, and doing that you're not even aiming. <laughs> you're really just guess firing, really. And you really have to know how to be able to do that to at least a moderate extent at the highest level, okay, to make this weapon that stinking crazy good. Because the only way you're gonna get that 0.5 second time to kill is if you do a, a headshot, body shot, okay? And that's with uh, a purple uh, or a maybe even a blue one will be good with that mat too, but purple and gold star uh, AWP. So what does that mean? So first off, you have to be able to quick scope. Uh, there's many forms of quick scoping. I won't go into all that here, but you at least have to know the basic quick scope. There, second thing you have to know is how to double tap with it, and what that means is you have to be able to know how to zoom in, <laughs> zoom in, and then like get a headshot on the first shot, and then do a quick scope on the second one. So you zoom in, like I'm actually looking through the scope, headshot. And then I do the guess fire. So I'm, I'm quick reload and then grab fire. I'm not actually looking through scope. So it's really fast. So it's like a boom, boom, like pretty much like in terms of rate of fire. And so you have to be able to know how to do that. And that's not hard. I can literally teach someone how to do that in a single session, like a single training session. Uh, so it's not hard, but it does take practice to be able to do like on a fast moving target uh someone who's really really like a professional who's really got really great movement that's not easy very easy to hit you know people in pubs or who are ground walking in the open so it requires you again the op to be able to quick scope and double tap with it and then to use it just generally proficiently like to not even be able to use it at that maximal kind of extent you also have to know how to be able to drag scope with it. Uh, Ryan today told, told, gave me the term for that one. Essentially what a drag scope is, it's like another form of a quick scope, but on this one, on the drag scope, you're gonna zoom in and you're, you're gonna guess your best, like make sure that the gun is not too far off from the target when you zoom in. And then as soon as you see an image, like the split second your brain eyes recognize the image, you're going to drag the scope to your target and pull the trigger. But you're not even waiting for the dot in the center of the zoom to actually get on the target before you pull the trigger. You're literally just going drag and pulling and you're pulling the trigger while you're dragging it. So you're like drag fire. <laughs> so it's like zoom in, drag fire. So it's like you're not even waiting to see the dot on the target and register that in your brain because that's too slow. So it's like another version of a quick scope, and we call that a drag scope. That's how I fire pretty much like 90% of my AWP shots 
in competition. Now, I'm not the best stopper, right? Ryan today is the best stopper, like period right now. Scanner, second best stopper, if not tied to first, whatever, I, you know, how do you rank that kind of thing? But heads up, I do get about the same damage as them and the same accuracy in a professional comp match. Like I actually have, like we get stats from competition games. So I'm up there. So I know what I'm doing. I'm not the best, but I know what I'm doing. I'm up there. I'm like, I don't know, somewhere up there. Anyways, those are two things you have to know how to do. All right. And so just heads up, if you can't do those things, you can still use the op proficiently because even just like average use of the op is still good. Now, if you are a beginner and you're saying, I have no idea what the hell you're talking about. Quick scope, drag scope, double tap, like what the hell are you talking about? Well, I have videos, literally, I believe two or maybe even three AWP videos on like we call them, ma I call them master class videos. And it's me in game walking you through step by step, literally how to train yourself to do these things. And so literally I have an AWP video that will teach you the basics. I almost put that finger down, but then I'd be flicking you off. And then the second finger is, uh, sorry, the second video is me teaching you the more advanced stuff, like the quick scoping and all that kind of stuff. And so there's actually literally two videos for you to just independently learn those things, okay? And it's not that hard. If you really took a week just to really try and learn those stuff, and just bait using my video like over and over and just playing it while maybe you're doing it, you'd be able to do it. But having said that, I can still teach someone how to do that in literally 15 minutes. So like, it, it's crazy. And if you come by my Twitch live streams when I'm coaching people, or you see my other videos on YouTube, you'll see how, how that's done. I know I just spent a lot of time on the AWP, but it's because it is that good of a weapon. It is the God tier weapon. It defines the meta. It's even more broken now than it was uh, a couple weeks ago because of as of December 7th, they made it so that peeking, head peeking as in like hiding your head behind a wall and shooting over the wall is a lot harder now. I'm getting shot in the face by a AWP players a lot more than I was a, a couple weeks ago because they changed the eye level of the, the player. So now your eye level is like like uh it's lower so like you have like you to see above the wall your head has to be exposed more so now you are exposed to the awp players more so like this op the op is the most broken now that it's ever been in the entire game in over three years i don't think it's taken a single nerf so what i'm trying to tell you is learn to master this weapon it's a return on your investment in terms of time because it is that good of a weapon they never nerfed it they never will because people throw people go up in arms when this gun gets nerfed but it's really unhealthy for the meta because you really can't even like go in the open now because of this weapon like it's that good you literally cannot fly in this game because of how easy it is to shoot someone who's flying uh, in the air all right and i don't think that's healthy for the meta I don't have an, a solution for it because I do use this and I do enjoy this weapon. And I do murder with it even in competition. I put out that damage that I need to do. So like I, I'm not complaining about it because I like it and I use it. But in like none uh, like none biased like it really does make this meta not as interesting in terms of movement because you cannot fly around and do all sorts of crazy stuff. All right. So know that. This weapon makes it dangerous for you to even leave your building, your hardcover, your mountain, your rock. You better not be, if you are a new player, I better not see you walking in the open, in the middle of the street, because you can die instantly. I was watching someone in competition scrims last night, a professional player, just walking in the street. I don't know what he was doing. I'm not going to name his name. And then all of a sudden, his body flew halfway across the street because he got double opt in like a fraction of a set in a second and his body just flew across the street and I was like, whoa, what the hell happened? Because he was like full health and he just disappeared to nothing. He got opped by one person on one team and then another person on another team headshot opt him. It was like, that's how fast you can die within a fraction of a second, like a minute fraction of a second. So that's why this gun is stupid broken. It's wicked easy to learn and it's fun as hell to use. Use this weapon. I know I spent a lot of time on this, but it's because it is that good, all right? And I know it, back in the day, there were literally only uh, two people, really only like one person who knew how to really quick scope uh, this op or the DAWP, right? Like maybe like, let's say uh, six months ago, there were only like two people who could do that, right? Three people, all right? And uh, four or five, okay, I'm exaggerating, like five people who knew how to do that in the entire world, at least in competition standards, right? Now, 
what happens is you got people like me teaching everybody I see now and putting YouTube videos out. So now like literally a lot of people can do this and this has really uh, improved the skill level of the mid-level competition teams. Before the high-level competition teams were uh, in uh, having a great time because only like a few of us could use the Adobe like that like the like you know on that kind of level and then just everyone else gets decimated but I, I'm sharing these things with you because it, it helps balance out the playing field level out the playing field another broken weapon right the m60 the m60 is a seriously dangerous weapon uh, now it is very similar to the AWP in that it can be used at very long range and do very very high damage the great news about this weapon is it's even easier to use or it's easier to master i should say than the awp all right now it can't kill as fast as the awp definitely not like the ki the time to kill for this weapon is now uh, with the recent nerf i'm guessing it's about 1.2 seconds all right and that's that's like you know body shot time to kill if you're getting lucky headshots you know whatever and that's at probably uh mid range if you're really long range it's probably like 1.4 1.3 second time to kill and like i mean really long range like you know, like a quarter across the map right as far as this gun will shoot and that's amazing it's like 20 percent across the entire map you can kill someone 1.4 seconds and it doesn't take crazy practice like the awp does and so with that there's a lower skill cap yet it's not completely as broken as the awp in terms of how how fast it can kill but it it is a lot more easier to use so you can get a solid time to kill at a very long distance now the interesting thing is when i coach people i will have the uh I will have the I will have them do an AKM, use an AKM or their best assault rifle, and I stay as far away from them and I go, kill me as fast as you can with your assault rifle. And they and I, I let them do it two-handed, I let them do it one-handed. And then okay, use the M60, and then I coach someone how to use it very quickly with some extra tips, special tips, and they always kill me like four times faster using the M60 than any other assault weapon, their best assault rifle weapon. And that's because it generally still is hard to hit all of your shots with other assault rifles and that's really what you need to do to make the time to kill uh, equivalent with all these assault rifles to the M60 a very long range okay so what I'm trying to tell you is that the M60 has a great uh, it's an okay time to kill but it's very easy to hit your shots at pretty much all ranges and so it makes it uh, you know a, a strong weapon uh, particularly at the long long range you shouldn't be using this at close range i was uh, like a dumbass i was doing this at close range yesterday and i died don't do that i'm not telling you to do that but at the very very long range this is very very deadly all right now it's not it, it now while it's super easy to pick up and shoot how to actually use it is very very difficult because you are so open uh you are totally exposed to your enemy and like i said what is the problem AWPs kill you in a fraction of a fraction of a second. The AWP is the hard counter to the to the M60. Well, the AWP is a hard counter pretty much to every gun uh, except close range weapons. But the M6, like the AWP, counters the M60 like nothing, uh, and so that's why the AWP is higher. But the M60 is hard to use in reality because you are that exposed, right? Everyone says, "Oh, M60 is so easy. It's so broken. It's so cheesy." Use it, I dare you, and because no one, now if you don't know, the reason why I'm, I'm saying that is because I am the number one M60 player in the world. No one, no one disputes that. I'm the only one using it at the highest level competition that well. Everyone can use it, but to use it like me is something else. And everyone who goes against me knows what it feels like. They go, holy shit, you didn't miss a single shot. Like, what the hell? Like, and so, now I make it look easy, but I, you have to have a, you have to have big balls to use the M60 against serious AWP players. Like you really have to know what you're doing. And I, it's hard for me to even describe to you what I'm doing because like it, it's about knowing when I'm safe to use it and having big balls to go. I am gonna take your AWP shot, but I'm gonna give you about the same damage with the, uh, uh, sorry, with the M60 back at you. So I'm gonna trade with you one on one that damage and I know I can trade that because I know I've got either the same health as you or more health than you or I know that I've got more teammates here than you like I, I, I really it's a lot more tactics than you think because I have to do these calculations in my head before I even go out there and fight with it I have to tell myself hey 
I'm going to win this fight if I tr trade equivalent damage. I don't miss a single shot. And so that's how you have to use it. You have to kind of calculate your situations and when you will win that fight and when you will not, don't just chance it, all right? And, like, and, that, and that's how I use the M60. So it's more about cal like a, the pre-fight, doing that mental calculation of I'm going to win that fight, assuming I don't miss a shot, I'm going to take that fight. It's a one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> I don't dare poke my head out with an M60 if two AWP players are looking at me. Like, I will die instantly. Uh, so you have to kind of know the situations, know what's going on around you at all ranges before you can actually use this like crazy effective. And also, you have to know how to strafe like a champion. Strafe is to move your character back and forth or circles or zigzag patterns. You have to know how to do that because you are standing there in the open two-handing this because you cannot one-hand this weapon. So you always have to two-hand it because it has random recoil, okay? So you have to know how to strafe like a champion and you have to know how to calculate those, like, I'm going to take those fights kind of thing. And that's, that's probably the hardest thing to do because it's not easy for me to teach you because it's all about map awareness and game sense that you just get from like years of playing this game, right? That that's the hard part, right? And so know that the M60 easy to you easy to shoot, easy to learn to shoot, but super challenging to actually use against good players. All right, good players because you are extremely open, right? So it's broken because of that, but it's also not as simple to use as you would think. Now the reason this is also up here in the S tier is because it breaks build in two shots at all ranges so this weapon essentially makes it so you, no one can leave their hard cover just like the AWP all right so know that that's also why it's up here and broken just like the AWP because it just destroys build now and I don't necessarily like that because it makes the meta now you have to sit at your building your rock your your pole and you can't leave it unless your team is helping you get out of that position because you can't just build across now if two people are m 60 in you or even one person's m 60 you and another person got like any other assault rifle and so it, it's a very difficult you know i don't really like what it does to build but i think the gun itself damage wise is very healthy right now because easy to use but not easy to master right and so m m60 is up here in S tier because it is meta defining. It changes how you have to play in this game and you should be playing like, I'm gonna hold this building, this hard cover as much as I can. So know that that's why it's up here, right? We spent a lot of time on that too. So let's start with the MP9, all right? The, these next weapons are all gonna be shorter than the top two because the top two are that strong. It, it takes a little bit more to talk about, right? So I'm telling you why it's good, but most importantly, I'm telling you how to use it, right? Uh, and so if I didn't tell you for the M60, I didn't really tell you how to use it. I told you you just needed big balls. How you use the M60 is you're behind like a mountain. Let's say I'm behind a little hill. My, my character is behind a hill. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk up the hill so I can look over the hill. I'm going to rev the M60. So up, I'm going to shoot the M60 up in the air so it revs up at its fastest fire rate. I'm going to shoot it. I'm going to go over the hill and then I'm going to point the weapon at the target where I think the target is. And then I'm going to strafe and I'm doing like a circle and I come back down behind the hill. All right. So again, I rev the M60 up. I'm firing in the air so it revs up. I come over the hill. I'm looking over the hill. I'm blasting. I'm only exposed to the enemy more than a second. And then I come back behind the hill. All right. And I do that. Now I won't do that in the same circle over and over because I'll get M6, I'll get shot by an AWP in the face. But like that is the concept. So I rev it up. And I come out and I just do crazy bird, like crazy damage at long range, and then I come back and I'm safe, all right? Or I'll come out and I'll check, and if I am safe, I'll do a little strafing side to side, little wiggle, wiggle patterns, you know, while I'm firing and unloading, and then I'll come back down. Like it depends on how safe I feel I am from that initial peak out, right? So I'm, it's very calculated how I'm putting myself out. Again, so you always want to i call this peeking even though you're not physically like grabbing a wall and peeking over it but i'm peeking fire fire i'll come out and do like a little wiggle pattern fire wiggle pattern over here fire I'll, I'll just be unpredictable if i don't know what i'm doing the enemy doesn't know what i'm doing so i'm like confusing myself with strafing and like you know that kind of thing so that's how to use the m60 so let's get to the mp9 all right the mp9 why is the mp9 good because it has a really fast time to kill about 0.6 0.6 second time to kill in the close range, but it also destroys build in three shots. And it is the fastest build break weapon 
in the close range, all right? And so this is excellent because it counters the DT-11 right here, right? Which is the best close range weapon in, in the game, really, if you can master it, assuming you are a master with it. So this is the only serious counter to the DT-11. Like, it's the only good counter to the DT-11 besides a sword, which is not really that good anymore. So the MP9, how do you use this? Well, if you are trying to counter a shotgun player, particularly the DT-11 player, you have to always be peeking in your close range fight. That is the number one, you have to be peeking. And you just, you have to be able to spray, obviously, uh, through their build and hit them. And that's way easier than it sounds uh, because this thing fires 12.5 bullets per second. That means it can break four build in one second. That's crazy, all right? Uh, and so you're gonna be able to break the build uh, while the person's spamming their build and you might even catch them. I got caught yesterday, I was trying to build behind me, the guy just spammed MP9 through my build and somehow I died. I was like, how the f Like I totally was building behind me and like that MP9 just cut through my goddamn build. And like, and so anyways, the MP9 is great for that. So how do you have to know how to use this, all right? To make it that good, you have to peek with it. One hand, you have to know how to shoot this with one hand. If you do not know how to shoot this with one hand, I do not, well, I mean, you should probably still use it two-handing it and ground walking, uh, like as in just walking on the floor. But I mean, like if you're serious about using this weapon in high levels, you gotta peek with it. So you gotta one hand, you gotta put your head as low as possible behind a wall, and you stick your hand over and you just spray, hopefully while blind firing. I would even say you have to know how to blind fire. Blind firing is peaking, except I'm not looking over the wall. Like I literally just try to shove my head down as low as possible and get my gun over and just blind fire, okay? And, and the reason why that's so important because of how fast you die in the close range. As you already know, you probably died before you even realized it many, many, many times against close range weapons like the DT-11, which will kill you in probably 0.3 seconds, the DT-11 by a good player. So you have to be peaking. And that's not easy to do against a good DT-11 player who knows how to maneuver on you. Like if you just hold the same peak on the same wall for too long, the DT-11 player is not stupid enough to walk in front of your weapon and get shot to death. Like no one is that dumb anymore. Not even in public games. When I go to public games, I'm so shocked and I'm impressed because everyone knows how to not walk into a peak now. Pretty, I wouldn't say everyone, but like most people don't just sit there and let you kill them while you're peeking, all right? Now, I don't play in the morning time lobbies. Sorry, morning time lobbies. But in the morning time lobbies, yes, I see a lot of ground walkers who will just walk into your peak and die. But like at nighttime, I barely see any of that. Nighttime, like uh, United States time, right? Like there's a lot better players at that time of day. And I don't see really many people who will walk into one of my peaks. I actually have to work for a lot of the kills and I'm very impressed with you all. Good job. Uh, so peak. And you have to know how to one hand aim with this weapon. I have a video that shows you how to do that. The great news is, is this is probably one of the easiest weapons to aim in this entire game, okay, at the highest level. Because it's just, it's a weird pattern. Now that being said, it's a downwards and then it goes up like a U. It does like a letter U. And then it goes up into the side to the right here. So it goes U up to the right. It's the weirdest kind of pattern ever. Uh, I think Scanner was saying this uh, a couple days ago in the screen. He's like, what gun goes like that? Like, what recoil pattern goes like that? That's so weird. I don't know. And he's, anyways, uh, so the, yeah, it's, this is a strange recoil, but it's an easy recoil. And it is kind of intuitive once you get used to it. So it's very easy to do. And man, this thing destroys on the head peak. This thing is so good at shooting out of the head peakers because of how easy it is to aim. And so, and the rate of fire, the rate of fire is pretty fast. I am dying, I, I have died against people of my similar level, in like when I'm peaking and they're peaking and I had an AKM and they had the MP9. And I am, I am just shocked because before I would never lose a peak fight with an AKM. But now, since my dang head is higher when I'm peaking, it's so dang dangerous. And it's so much easier to hit your shots with the MP9 than it is the AKM at the close to mid-ish range, all right? So the MP9 is really dangerous at the head peak because if you're hitting shots in the head, people are dying. They're dying so fast. And it's kind of quiet. That quietness also helps it, right? By the time the enemy got shot, they already like took too much damage, right? And that, that's that's good thing for the person using it. So one hand peak with it, 
and you, I'm sorry, you have to be able to one hand peek with it essentially in the close range. And you have to know how to maneuver yourself so that no matter how the DT11 player moves on you, you're gonna be peeking when he comes at you, all right? So you're like playing a chess game of, okay, he moves, I move, that person moves, I move. And you're trying to keep a peek on that in between you and that DT11 player. That's how you use this weapon, all right? And that's how you counter a DT11 player, a top professional DT11 player with this. The, now, the funny thing is this weapon got a slight buff in recent days, like a 0.5 second rate of fire. That doesn't really help much, like at all. But that little buff kind of made everyone go, "Hmm, what? Let's give this weapon another chance." And now a lot of the literally the best players in the world are using this and using this frequently. Uh, pretty much when they see this, they will pick it up. All right, and that that's got to tell you something. All right, but they're using it well. They're not just ground walking with it, two handing shoot. No, they're one hand peeking with this and shooting it even mid distance. All right, and they're hitting the shots. I would say master this. Peak with it, you have to, at least at the highest level, and it'll reward you for learning this, and it doesn't take long to learn. Now the MP5, this one's interesting because this one really has let me down, okay? It let me down last night in competition. I was behind the guy, I was like, I got this. I was in the close range, I was in a building with him. I was shooting him in the back, and before I could kill him with MP5, he threw up one or two build, and I couldn't kill him after that because it takes five bullets with the MP5 to break a build, all right, versus the three with the MP9. And the MP9, I believe, now even shoots at a faster firing rate than the MP5, or it's relatively equivalent, all right? So s thank you for the support. Appreciate you. Thank you, Space Roach. So, wow, rating from Space Roach. Wow, awesome, 10, 10 raiders. Thank you. So... Know that if you're using the MP5, it's, it's not as good as it is on paper. So on paper, the MP5 actually has a faster time to kill than the MP9, which is crazy. Uh, if you get headshots, that is. Now you have to get headshots with this MP5 to make it equivalent to the MP9. So technically on paper, I'm like, even I told myself yesterday, I was like, there's no reason I should be using the MP9 because like, I'm such a good aimer with MP5, like it's faster time to kill, I can hit headshots in the close range. I told myself that yesterday, and I was using it more yesterday, and it let me down again. It's like the second day of competition in a row that I tried this, I was like, I'm going to devote time to this, I'm going to try it, and it let me down again. And it's really because of the build break, right? Now, what happened is, uh, again, when I was using this before, on the first day it failed me, I was holding off fugitives, which if you don't know is the best competition world, team in the world. And I snuck up on them and I literally got each of them down to like 30 health by myself. Like I laid a trap and I, but if I was using the MP9 in that situation, I would have gotten the kill on one of them. And then we probably would have won that fight. We didn't because they just, you know, they whooped my ass after that because they just healed up and I was the only person there. And, and you know, it was a three on one. And they would whip my ass anyways because they're that good. But the MP5 just let me down. Like, I had the advantage on them. I, I, I waited. I peaked. I did a crazy amount of bursts to them. But they lived with one tap of health. And then they just put a build. And I couldn't do anything because five bullets is too long for me to get damage on them with. Especially when his teammates are helping and shooting at me, right? That is not good. But the MP9, usually what will happen is the person will put up one build and you'll get like maybe a couple shots behind that build on them and a lot of the times that couple shots is enough to finish the kill if you got the jump on them all right and and that's why this gun is so good practically over the mp5 right i don't even know why i put the mp5 that high the, the reason why i put the mp5 that high is because on paper if you hit at shots it's the like the one of the fastest time to kills in the game that's not a shotgun right and so it's amazing in theory but in reality, it's actually kind of hard to laser beam all the shots, like have that serious control of each shot because it does have quite a bit of jitter, especially a horizontal jitter on the bullets. Uh, and so it, it is in practice very hard to hit all headshots with one hand because like I said, uh, if you don't know, if you're a beginner player, you have to be peeking in the close range with this in, with one hand. Why? Because this does maximum damage in the close range, but again, if you're trying to play against a shotgun player who does crazy bursts in the close range, you have to be peaking the fight or you will immediately die, all right? So MP5 is a soft, soft, soft counter to the DT11, but I'm, I used to use this MP5 primarily in competition and not even use a DT11, uh, but it did get a slight nerf to its rate of fire. 
uh, a few patches ago. And I didn't really talk about it because I didn't think it was that big a deal. But now I'm really finding that it's just falling short. I'm always just falling short that one like tap or two tap. And I'm just like, it was so close. But so close doesn't cut it in, in like, you know, in the game. You die, you die. But every, in literally every situation that the MP5 failed me, I thought to myself, if I had an MP9, would, I, would that situation have gone differently? And the answer literally in pretty much every situation was yes. And so I was like, God dang it. Because the MP5 before would always, would always do me good. But I think that rate of fire nerf that it got a few patches ago really hurt it more than I thought, all right? So I, I even move it down here. But the beauty of it is, is that it has a bigger clip, but still. So how to use the MP5? You got a one-hand aim with it. You got a peek with it. I have, again, a masterclass video on how to one-hand aim with this weapon, all right? Uh, it does not have an easy-to-learn recoil pattern, and so it is kind of difficult. It, it does take practice. It's not one that you can just pick up and intuitively start one-handing because it's probably one of the hardest recoil patterns in the game, really, actually, now that I think about it. So it's not easy. Uh, and it just it doesn't cut it for me these days with all these other weapons having super fast time to kills and everyone knows how to throw a build now like really fast everyone is very quickly like mentally attuned to throwing build up very fast as soon as they get shot now off guard so it's very hard to kill someone with an mp5 uh, unless you really just caught them sleeping uh it, you know or you get like all headshots which is more difficult than it sounds the sword, I'm not going to talk too much about the sword. The sword is not as good as it used to be because of how dangerous and fast you die now in the close range. It's very hard to get into close range against an entire squad with a sword when everyone they've all got DT-11s and MP9s, all right? It's not easy. You don't see this being used that much. Only a few players will pick it up here and there at the highest level of play and use this and be successful with it. Uh, it's, it's just, it's not worth the risk most of the time. And usually the people who can use this in the close range are the people who like have a lot of lag, latency, or ping issues. And so they're able to like navigate into the close range better. But like, yeah, this is not, it's very hard to get into the close range with how fast build breaks, unless you're playing really sneaky and stuff like that, but it kind of just isn't worth it most of the time, all right? Now, ninja tactics are always great, and they work because it catch people off guard, but it's just overall, like, you don't see everyone on a team using this because of that. Only, like, one person in the entire game will, like, the entire game, maybe only one person will be ninja with the sword around, right? It's that kind of uncommon to see because it's difficult to do. But you have to be able how to ninja. You have to be able how to know how to move in quietly and like crouch walk. You have to know how to climb silently. That's that's not easy to do. You have to know how to move silently. Also not easy to do. And like sneak in on people. All right. So it's all about like knowing how to get in there and take the fight. All right. So now we're getting to the assault rifles, the FAL. All right. So the FAL. Got a slight buff, it seems, to the rate of fire. This was not official, but like officially released by Big Box, but it seems to fire a hell of a lot faster than it used to. Hey, thank you for the series subscribe popping. I appreciate you, man. We don't get a lot of those subs here. Thank you so much for that. Always a champion, King Poppin. Anyways, uh, the, a the FAL seemed to have gotten a buff, so now you can fire faster. Uh, and that's awesome because the damage is really good on this per bullet. So if you can fire faster, you're killing people faster. Now, the, with the faster fire rate comes more recoil, like it's random recoil, particularly like it starts to bounce around and you're not able to control it. So at the fast, I'm sorry, at the close to midish range, not in the close range, don't use this in the close range, you're going to die. But use this in like the close to midish range, you have to know how to be able to shoot it as fast as possible. Uh, and there's, I have a, I have a video for that essentially somewhere. Uh, but to shoot as fast as possible, literally you just press as fast as you can. The, the, the firing cap rate got a lot faster, I think, from the way I was able to fire it. So know that fire it is as fast as possible fire when you're in the close mid range. When it doesn't matter if your crosshair is jumping around randomly because it does have random recoil. But if you're at further range, slow down the rate of fire. So that it has less of that, it has no random recoil. And if you slow it down to a certain point, which is like a mid firing rate, it will have no random recoil pretty much, which is great. But you pretty much have to wait for the crosshair to go up and down to the target, all right? Now, what you can do if you know how to fire the foul, you can even speed it up. But first off, 
To fire it slower at a farther distance, just wait for the crosshair. Fire up, fire, the crosshair goes up and it comes down. Fire again as soon as that crosshair comes back to her. Fire, 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 fire. And so you're balancing the crosshair on the target. That's how to visually know how to shoot this weapon, all right? Now, if you want to go at a faster rate, what you can do is you fire up on the first shot and then you tilt the gun downwards so that you're forcing you're literally forcing the crosshair down on the target sooner and you keep that fire rate up. So the first shot is a full trigger press at like horizontal gun and then I pull the gun down a little bit and then I fire at that faster fire rate. And so it's like you're forcing it down a little bit into that into that faster recoil. Uh, that's actually how to shoot, shoot fast, but you, you kind of have to control the trigger, control the rate of fire by how you press the trigger. There is a threshold for where random recoil is introduced. The further you are away, generally the slower you're going to shoot it. Now, work the crosshair on that weapon. Do not, I, I do not use the like the aim down sight, like the dot scope. And Little Gero, who's the one who coached me on the foul, does not use that either. Uh, but I would say it may be very, very long range. You're probably safe to do that. Just make sure you're hitting shots is the most important thing, right? Not missing. Uh, so easy to use because it's really a semi-auto weapon. It just you just have to know how to manipulate the timing of the trigger and use the crosshair. All right, that's how to use it. But how to actually use it when you're fighting someone, just like the M60. Okay, you are going. This is the hill. This is like that little rock hill right here. Right, you come up. Your little person comes up. You take your shots. Like you take three shots. Boom, boom, boom. You come back down. Boom, boom, boom. You come back down. You go the other way. Boom, boom, boom. Come back down. Come up. Boom, boom, boom. Come back down. So you're confusing the enemy. You're popping up to different places behind your rock. And you're putting out good burst on the enemy. All right, that's how to use the foul. You don't just sit there, stand out in the open, and go, "I'm going to kill this person 200 to zero and fire like you know a lot of shots." You're going to die from an AWP. All right, so how you fire? Don't be greedy. Just come up, be happy with your 60 to 100 damage, and just keep po poking out until you kill the enemy eventually. Don't expect the player to die instantly the first time you see them, unless they were low on health or something from another fight. All right. Just don't, don't, don't ever expect that, and then you're always going to play better, right? Period. So now the AKM is a great weapon uh, because, oh, by the way, for the foul, the reason why this weapon is good for you beginner players is because it's so silent. By the time the enemy realizes they got shot, they already took three shots, and that's a lot, a lot of damage, particularly if you get a headshot. So that's also why it's really good, all right? So the AKM. Now the AKM is an amazing weapon. It's, it's one of my favorite weapons because it can you can use it as an all-around weapon. You can it's the, literally the only weapon in the entire game besides maybe the AWP where you can use that weapon and that weapon alone and use that as your only build and then put fill up the rest of your loadout with awesome utility stuff. A lot of heals, a lot of grenades, rockets, you name it. The AKM is literally the only other gun besides AWP where you can do that. Because it's great at the close range. It's got a well, it's not great. It's not you're not gonna win against all these other scary close range weapons, but it's got really a good time to kill in the close range. Like really good for an assault rifle. It's the best time to kill in the close range, close to mid-range as well, for an assault rifle. So it's deadly in the close to close mid-range, and it's okay at all the other ranges. Just okay. It's not like excellent at all the other ranges because the damage is so low now per shot at long range it's like 14 damage per shot you're really not going to be killing anyone at long range because no one's really that bad anymore where they just take like you need like 13 shots on them before you kill them like that people don't usually let you do that at long long range all right so you ain't going to be expecting to kill people long range with but it just you're going to get that poke that's all you need so this weapon is strong at all ranges it's the best all-around weapon there is in the game. The only problem is the recoil. The recoil is very hard to control. It might be one of the hardest recoils, uh, recoils to control in the game. Know that it does not have random recoil, so you can control it. I have YouTube videos for that. It doesn't get any simpler if you watch the video and like learn how to do it. Anyone can do it. I can teach them how to do it. 15 minutes. This is easily doable. But So don't be intimidated by it. Just master it. Control it. Now how to use this weapon i advocate now that first off you you can use it just like the foul in the m60 where you're behind that rock you come out fire 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 right do those kind of patterns 
So you're shooting out bursts at long range, just being happy with your little bit of poke and you're whittling the enemy down, right? That's how to use it with two hands. I better not see you just standing there on your rock, unloading your whole clip at the person and literally just standing there or even just strafing out there for more than three seconds. You're gonna get double opt, you're gonna die, all right? So you, you shouldn't, honestly, I tell people with this weapon, you should never two-hand it, ever, all right? And I have to tell myself that because I am a lazy bastard. And so I will stand there and ground walk with it just because I'm lazy, all right? The Valve Index controllers are heavy. It hurts your shoulders when you play this game, you know, a couple hours a day. So you should never be two-handing this weapon. You should always be one-handing this weapon, all right? You should always be one hand, one hand, which firing it while peeking a wall, like you're holding onto the wall, and you're looking over and you're firing like this, full autoing, and you know how to control the recoil. It's down, down, swiggle, and then like check mark. That's how I tell myself. So I go like that, or you are doing the two hand thing where you're like doing the peek above the rock kind of thing. That's the only ways to use this weapon because the time to kill is not as good anymore as it used to be. All right. So compared to everything else that's so dead, deadly out there, all right? And so that's how you use the weapon. Don't two-hand it, all right? The reason why I say don't two-hand it at long range is because it's hard. it really is hard to hit all of your shots. To make the AKM as equivalent to kill a person in time as an M60, you, most people, there's only like a few people in the world who have a, will have a better time to kill with the AKM than they will have with the M60 at long range, right? Because it's not easy to not miss a single shot, but the M60 will have a great time to kill if it misses a several shots. The AKM will not, right? Because you're gonna have to reload. And when you reload, time to kills drop dramatically, okay? Once you reload, you're, the enemy ain't dying, right? Pretty much, a good enemy. So the AKM, great all-around weapon, it does take practice. It's Honestly, it takes probably the most practice. Like when I take a break from the game for a week, I realize that my AKM aim is the thing that's hurt the most. My AWP aim actually doesn't change that much. The AKM aim gets a lot worse, all right? AKM, fantastic weapon though. Like I will use this if I see it. I'll even use a one star because I know how to control the recoil so well. But like that, that's how good this is. It's a great weapon. I love it, and it, it, I love it because of how unique it is compared to all the other weapons. But it did, again, it does the most damage and close to mid-range, so in theory, that's the best place to use it, right? Versus the other assault rifles. All right, let's catch up with chat here for a second. Okay, tell that to pink and scrims, just, yeah, explosion should be clear, tech, not damage tech, okay. okay. The best players in this game don't pin drop. <laughs> the best players in this game don't pin drop. It's too high risk for him. Slick Skills says, tell that to Pink and Scrims yesterday. Oh yeah, I pin dropped. I pin dropped VIPX twice and we won the fights twice because I pin dropped them twice. Yeah, it's, it's hilarious. Yeah, it, pin dropping still works. Always works. Always. Uh, yes, it's hilarious. Okay, let's catch up. AK is bay. Yes, AK is fun. AK is great. It's fun. I, I love the weapon. It's my favorite weapon, actually. Uh, you know, so anyways, let's move on to the MK-18. So the MK-18, this is a funny one because the MK-18, man, it got buffed. And the amount that this weapon got buffed is actually crazy. This weapon is at the best place it has ever been in the entire game. The entire three years this game has been out. The MK-18 can literally kill someone in two bursts. And it was able to do that a very, very long time ago. But it wasn't as easy to hit your bursts as it is now versus a long, long time ago. And the firing rate right now of it is faster than pretty much it has ever been, except when it was broken for like a couple weeks and you could hold, like you, there was a trick where it would fire full auto. And even then the gun wasn't extremely overpowered, which is hilarious, different, different conversation. But the MK-18 in theory is a great weapon. You just have to know how to use it. Now, my competition partner, friend, clan friend, clan mate, VIP Noah, one of the best players in, in, out there, uh, is probably the best player I have seen with this weapon since it has been buffed, all right? Now, how does he use this? He holds his hardcover, like he's behind, a, he's behind a rock again. Let's just do the rock thing. He's behind a rock. He knows where the enemy is, like he sees the enemy out there. He knows where they are. He pops out, he fires, and comes back down. Boom, boom. You can't even see him because by the time you see him on your game, He's already fired his shot and he's gotten behind the rock again, right? So 
he will do burst, 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 burst. You got no chance to shoot back at him. He hopefully hits you with like 75 plus damage if you hit all the shots. You got maybe some headshots in there. And so it's got great damage per bullet versus the AKM, for example. It's got three shot burst. The recoil is easy to control now. The rate of fire is really, really, really fast now. It's almost full auto if you know how to fire it, like at its fastest rate without clunking it up. But it's not easy to use. And there are situations where, you know, you're going to have to practice with it. This is not something you can just pick up and you're beast with it. I tried. It's, it's not that easy. I tried it in scrims. I got, I got destroyed. Uh, it takes a certain kind of play style to do really well with. You have to be patient, you have to be sneaky, you have to know how to, it's kind of like I use the M60, I tell you, you know, I have all these tricks. You have to have those kind of tricks in those fights to be able to poke out, get your damage without getting shot. You're whittling down the enemy and you have to have, you have to know how to counter the recoil. So I told you how to kind of use it, how do you actually shoot it? Well, the good news is, is the recoil pattern now is not random. You can actually control the three shots. And so it's kind of like you push it like, up and forward, kind of like that. Uh, and you can do it with one hand even. You can actually laser beam with one hand at long range. There's, I put that in a couple videos ago of someone showing me you could do this. I went in, I, was, I can do it as well. So know that you can do it. It's not easy to hit all three of your shots on a moving target, mind you. It really isn't like someone who's strafing. It's kind of difficult because the three bullets like it's very hard to control the three bullets so that the three bullets go in like a straight line following like a strafer, for example. So hitting a strafing target's not easy. So you kind of just have to accept, accept that limitation, but know that it has its niche for that pop out burst play style. So if you're gonna play that kind of play style, it, you might want to master this weapon. And I, I do play that play style when I'm not lazy. I'm usually lazy most of the times, particularly in scrims, but like th this weapon can be used if you know how to use it well. And I just told you how to use it. I told you how to counter the recoil. I have a video for how to counter the recoil. There's no reason, you shouldn't know how to use this, but know that if you can fire this at its fastest rate, it is very deadly. This is the only weapon I would say in the mid range that you are okay to ground walk with in two hand. Like I, I would say if you're gonna ground walk, as in you're walking in the open or just walking on the floor and you're just taking your fight, I call it dueling, you're dueling another player. I would say this is maybe a weapon for you because if you can fire it at its faster firing rate and you are laser beaming to the face, you're probably going to kill your enemy before the enemy kills you, all right? Because it probably has a crazy time to kill if on paper. Like if you take the fastest two bursts, like I could fire, I bet you it's probably like point, point 0.6 second time to kill. It's probably like... Yeah, that's probably like 0.6 second time to kill. Just, I'm, I'm guessing. So in theory, if you are great with this, go ground walk your heart out with it, all right? It's one of the only weapons I'd say you could ground walk with besides the M60 and the AWP. So maybe that's your play style. I, I want to be good with this weapon. I'm trying to pick it up in competition that, that where it doesn't, like, I don't have to sweat too hard and do this. I'm trying to pick this up in scrims, but it's not as easy. Like, you have to change, I have to change my play style for it at least. So know that it's there, all right? Now, the M10, this gun, this shotgun, is underrated. So the M10 is easy to use because if you don't know if you're a beginner player you can hold down the trigger you literally can hold down the trigger and just let it go all right and that in the close range is fantastic now know that the recoil of this weapon is actually more difficult than you think like i never use this weapon i picked it up yesterday in competition i was trying to use it i failed horrendously because i wasn't used to the recoil i can shoot a dt11 really well really accurate. I can't shoot the M10. Like the recoil on the purple and the gold, particularly the gold recoil is so crazy. Like the gold M10 shoots so fast and it jumps so fast compared to even its own three star that it surprises you. So you're probably going to miss shots if you're holding the shots down. So know that you got to be ready mentally for the M10 recoil. And most like nine times out of 10, when I'm using this in a real game, I miss those, those shots with the gold M10 and I've died because of it. Uh, and so that, know that the gold M10 has not almost, but it has a comparable time to kill versus the DT11 in the close range, right? So know that if you see a purple or you see a gold one, you can kind of use it, but you, you best know that you, you can't miss any pellets and you can't miss any shots to make this relatively uh, comparable to a DT11. Don't get me wrong, you will never 
win a one-on-one versus like if a DT11 pro player goes against an M10 pro player, the DT11 player is like always gonna win, like nine times out of ten. But like you know, if you, if this is a squad game, so it's not a one-on-one. It's very different what happens in squads. So if you you got an M10, a gold one, I ain't gonna laugh at you if you're using that in, in like serious play. Okay, so the M10. Hold the trigger down, but be damn ready for the recoil. It goes up and then it comes back down, the recoil. So sometimes when you're pulling it down really fast, you forget about that bolt that, that comes back down. So like it, the recoil is stranger than you think. And if you've never shot the gold M10 before, like it, it ain't, it, you know, then you definitely, you're gonna be surprised by the recoil. So I, like if I really wanna start using this, I, th I think I have to go into a custom map pick up the gold and just like totally get used to it. I did that once a long time ago, but clearly I don't remember it because I fail with it every time uh, when I when I try to use it in competition. So we finished all the A tier, right? These are the, now if you, you didn't, you know, if I didn't clarify, the S tier is you see this weapon, you pick it up, you learn this weapon if you don't want to use it as soon as you can, spend your time on these wisely because they are the best weapons in the game, hands down. The DT-11, if I had to choose a close range weapon, because I don't have a close range weapon up in the S tier and I'm categorizing these by tiers, it would look like this, okay? It would be the DT-11 is up here in the S tier and the MP9 is up here in the S tier for what they are, like SMG shotgun, right? Now this is what this would seriously look like because they are these are both meta defining, right? But being in the close range doesn't happen as much as you think it does anymore because of how dangerous it is, how easy it is to kill people at long range. So honestly, in most, like in competition, like most of the fights are long range until, and if you lose the long range fight, then it becomes a close range fight. But usually it's a long range fight first. And so what I'm trying to tell you is long range matters more than close range. So that's why I feel like these two are just ranked higher. But know that, like in all seriousness, if, like, if I had to put, you know, the categories of weapons, oops, if I had to put the categories of weapons again, this is what it, this would look like, all right? But just this is how i'm doing this okay i don't think like the the two the weapons that are up in the s tier are like me saying these if you're going to put give any nerfs to weapons you probably want to nerf these these i don't think need nerfs to the weapons the a tier right so a tier fantastic weapons these are meta for sure like they're all amazing at what they do each each weapon has a different niche and i think that's really interesting because this is the this is really the first time in this game that there's actual niches to like every single weapon. Big Box, the developers did a great job of that. I just think the time to kill is too fast. I keep saying that. Now let's get to the B tier weapons. So the B tier weapons are those that are great. They're not horrible. I wouldn't make fun of you if you used them. Let me, let me double check some of those. Hold on. <laughs> okay, I wouldn't make fun of you now if you use these B tier weapons, but you, you better be listening to how I'm telling you how to use these weapons, right? Because you have to be able to know how to use these right to even make them B tier, all right? So just just heads up. Hold up for a second. Okay, so the Seiko, Sako, it used to be called that. Now it's called the S86 because of copyright issues or something. So know now that the Seiko, Sako, was almost S tier until the op got rebuffed. The op took a nerf, now it got buffed again. So like, now the Seiko is not worth using again because of how stupid dangerous the op is now. Because head peeking got nerfed, and that's what you have to do with the Seiko to be good with it, head peeking got nerfed, it's so much easier to hit a headshot with an AWP now, it's kind of ridiculous. I was literally against one of my friends, Creamy VR yesterday, and I was literally holding my head as low as possible. He did have the high ground on me. I couldn't even see him. I was literally blind firing. I kid you not, literally blind. I cannot see him. I shoved my arm almost as low as I possibly could. I was firing at him. I held one on up with an AKM, and he shot me in the head still. And I was like, God, like I wasn't even damn looking. Like that's so stupid that like now you can see someone's head even though you're trying to shove your head as low as possible. Like it's, anyways, the AWP is so goddamn broken now that there's no need to pick up the Seiko anymore. I was almost about to make a video. You got to start using the Seiko because the AWP got nerfed. But now that since the AWP is back and is stronger than before, don't dare waste the ammo on the Seiko. Give that ammo to the AWP player. There's no reason to pick up the Seiko over the AWP. Not one reason. The bullet on the AWP travels faster than the Seiko. It does more damage. It's easier to hit your shot with AWP than the Seiko. There's literally, you can fire the AWP 
faster than you can fire the Seiko, believe it or not, um, big box lowered the rate of fire on the Seiko. There was a time when I was probably one of the best Seiko players in the world because that's all I like played and then I was mastering it and I was using competition. I could kill someone, headshot, body shot, like really fast, pretty much as fast as my arm could move, I could kill someone, it wouldn't happen every time, but I do get those lucky ones that are nice clips. But then they nerfed it. I think like once I started putting clips like out, that out, like they nerfed the crap out of it. So they nerfed the firing range. So you can't do it that fast anymore. At least this was a long time ago. This is like a year ago probably, right? That I'm saying this. So know that you can fire faster with the AMP. So there's no reason to use this echo. But how would you use this if, if you have to? You have to head peek. You have to shoot. There's no reason to two-hand it. One hand, right? Now you have to make sure you have off-hand influence off if you're you, you know one-handing all these weapons like I'm telling you, all right? Know that. All right. <laughs> One, one minute. What's up, baby? You want to be in the video? Yeah? Okay, okay. Okay, you can be in the video. All right, hold on. Let's turn the camera down. He shot at the very top pixel of your head. Thank you. Right? It did. Yeah, I'm sure he did. And God, I, like, I didn't even... I thought I was as low as possible. Yeah, his damn aimbot creamy. I know. But it was funny because like I, I headshot him like twice in a row with my shots and then he, he gets me for that one one. I was like, God damn, he paid me back. Anyways, yeah, that was nasty. You, you don't want to be in the video? You want to be in the video? You, you want to be in the video? You want to go down? Oh, you don't want to be in the video? Okay, you knew daddy was filming? Okay, gotcha. All right. All right, okay. So let's get to it. So Seiko, don't use this weapon. It takes super high skill. Honestly, the Seiko... Oh, dang it. You just messed up my camera. Sorry. Wait, hold on. Yeah, yeah, sorry. You messed up my camera. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't do that. Thank you. No, 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 no. Don't touch the camera unless you want to be in the video. You're going to be in the video if you're going to touch the camera, all right? Okay. So the Seiko takes too high a skill. It's honestly the highest skill weapon to master and to be able to use at that professional level because it takes great timing, takes fast like reflexes, and takes great aim, all right? So very hard to use. Don't use it. The Matadors now. This is a fun one. Okay. Actually, we're dropping, we're dropping the Seiko. Why did I even put this at B tier? Nah. My, my message was don't use it. That means it's C tier, right? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not ranking this at the back end of C tier, but we're putting this in C tier for now. You shouldn't use the Seiko. With how good the AOP is, you should not use the Seiko. I, I, if someone on my team is using a Seiko and I have a gold op, I'm going to be very offended, all right, and very angry because it's very hard to get a lot of AWP ammo, and particularly in a high-level game, right, against good players. So if you are using a Seiko and someone's got a good op, you are doing your team a disservice, all right? Just PSA out there, all right? So now, the Matadors. This is actually hilarious. The Matadors can be used, all right? The gold Matadors have an extremely fast time to kill. Start. Those gifts are not for you. Those are for other people. No, 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 no. Stop dragging that gift. What is that? Okay, okay. Let Daddy finish his video first. We're almost there. We're in, like, the C tiers. Okay. So now, the Matadors. So the Matadors, the gold ones, actually have an extremely fast time to kill. And I think the Matadors got a damage buff of two stars since this last patch. That's our guess. No one can tell me and confirm to me because no one remembers what the dang things used to shoot because people barely used it. But the gold ones do seriously crazy damage. If I had to calculate the time to kill, my guess is probably 0.3 or 0.4 seconds if you don't miss a single pellet and you're using gold ones, all right? That's my guess. Because I think, I, I kind of understand how Big Box tries to nerf these weapons now. It's, it's been a while, and I kind of see how they're trying to place it. I'm pretty sure they wanted to make the time to kill faster on this in paper than the DT-11. And so I believe, on paper, the time to kill is faster than the DT-11. Now, why does this weapon fail because, or suck? Because you have to ground walk with it. It's not easy to swap it out and fly and then swap it back in, especially if you lag or if you have a high lag. And in the, it's really sucky against build. So how do you use this? You have to, you pretty much have to get in people's faces and shoot. But Ryan today was actually killing in scrims last night with the Matadors. It was hilarious. Now, you know, make that what you will. But what he was doing was he was you come out, fire with Maddie's, come back in. So like he, there's a wall. He comes out, fires, come back in. Comes out, spray, come back in. Spray and come back in. Spray and come back in. But like I guess the damage is pretty substantial on those gold ones to warrant kills because uh, it's pretty dangerous. So. I wouldn't make fun of you if you use the Matadors. Know that the gold ones I would use, maybe even the purple, since they got a two-star buff, like 
the purple probably also have a decent time to kill. I mean, I'll use these and I've killed people in games like when I need to. Uh, but I mean, if you're going to be in someone's face and you're going to ground walk and you know what kind of player you are, if you know, if, you, if you're doing that, then this, I wouldn't make fun if you had to use this, but getting a lot of ammo for it is not the easiest thing to do. But this thing is horrendous at breaking builds, right? So how to use this? Be point blank, because you can't miss a single pellet if you want to stand a chance against the other close range weapons, against equivalently skilled players, right? Uh, but know that it's okay now, perhaps because of a huge buff it got in damage, right? Now, the Tech 9. Oh boy, the Tech 9. What a letdown the Tech 9 was. The Tech 9, when this came out, I was like, oh boy, everyone's like, oh, this is the DT11 killer. Scanner messaged me and was like, yo, Ping, like, this, this thing's probably the DT11 killer right here, bud. And I was like, no way. And then so, like, uh, and it was because he gave me the math on it. And I was like, whoa, okay, this is interesting. And then, lo and behold, we're several months out, or a few months out now, since this being as, you know, thing has been released. And it hasn't reached the meta. Why is that? Because, well, the reason why is because of how horrible the, re the recoil is. It's a really tough recoil pattern. Like, really, really tough. Uh, it hurts me to do physically because it's like a really fast downward and then like this little swiggle at the end and you have to do it fast. And like, it physically hurts my shoulder doing it after a while. But the reason why it's really sucky is because of how little ammo it has. It's really hard to break one build and kill someone in one magazine. And remember, like I said, if you have to reload once, your time to kill plummets with the weapon. So in, what happens in a real game is that you probably miss one or two shots and you break maybe one build and then you're not going to kill someone in one magazine. And the problem is you have to be pretty much point blank with this to use this well because the recoil pattern is so bad. So like if this recoil pattern was, for example, as easy as the MP9, oh boy, I think this thing would be like meta, even if the magazine didn't change. But in reality, the recoil pattern is literally the hardest recoil pattern to control in the entire game, okay? This one took me, I was in a hotel room because I was at a work conference and I was like, I got nothing else to do, it's nighttime. So like I'm going to master this. And it took me literally two hours to figure it out, to show you and create a video for you and master it myself and do so. Because it was that physically hard to master. And when I say master, I mean I can laser beam with one hand with it, all right? Wasn't easy. I can't really laser beam. It's kind of just good grouping, but it's not really laser beam. I don't feel confident enough to shoot a head peeker while I'm head peeking at like a little bit of distance. So know that it's, it's just that tough and it's, it's just... It's not what we thought it would be. The MP9 is what we thought that the Tech 9 would be. Okay, so know that the it's just it's not as good as what we thought. And damn, because it, it would have been cool in theory. But don't get me wrong. If you're going to use this, it has on paper one of the fastest time to kills, but you can't miss a single shot. Right, that is the name of the game. You miss a shot, you got to reload pretty much, or you're gonna die. Right, period. And that's just how it works. All right. So now let's move on. We got the now RFB. The RFB is down here in B tier because, ah oh man, with everything else that kills you so fast right now, particularly with how dangerous it is to head peek and fire with the op, because of the op right now, the RFB has gotten nerfed substantially. So I feel good about this one because I was competition, my friend and competition partner, Colin the Five, was the best player in the world with the RFB. And so I've seen him play for an entire year with this weapon. I know what it takes to be like crazy with this. And it can be done. But the problem is now is that the meta has changed so bad because head peeking is even worse than it was before. Ops are already dominant over the head peek. But now head peeking is so much worse than it was before that you, you always have to head peek with the RFB because the damage isn't good enough. The time to kill isn't good enough. At long range, mid range, or close range. It's just okay and that's not good against all these amazing guns so you have to head peek or you have no chance and the problem with head peeking again you get shot in the face because people will shoot that one little pixel on your head with an awp and you get shot for a crap ton of damage and you've already lost that fight for your whole entire team all right taking one up shot to the face that's what happened to me yesterday uh, and so rfb not as good as it used to be unfortunately and that's very sad uh, but it is a solid all reliable weapon the only reason why it's down here is because there's no reason to pick this over the akm 
because the AKM has good damage in the close to midish range. The time to kill is so much faster than the RFB. The damage is better on each bullet. So the, the AKM, you can get away with one weapon build because it kind of can at least somewhat compensate at all ranges. But the RFB, you have to have a close range weapon because you have no chance of killing someone at the close range due to the slow rate of fire and the poor damage and yeah, it's just you, you're gonna die, all right. So you you need another weapon in your build. So you're always needing a two weapon build versus the AKM, for example. Uh, but it just doesn't have that time to kill in any range compared to the FAL or the AKM or the MK18 now. And so in, in all seriousness, besides the CX4, the RFB is is the second worst assault rifle. It, it's really sad because it was actually like at the top of my tier list for a very long time. Um, but now I think it's I think it's really down there now. It's only I only use it because it's everywhere. <laughs> like, and the recoil pattern is generally easy and intuitive to learn. That's really the only thing it's got going for it. So if you are a beginner player and you just need to work on your aim, if you pick this up, you're probably going to do okay with it. If you particularly if you two hand it, because it pretty much has like no recoil if you two hand it. But in all seriousness, this is not a gun you want to pick up and master and spend too much time on because it just ain't that good. All right, period. And that, that's just how it is, right? Sad, sad reality there. All right. So now let's get to the Magnum. All right. So the Magnum is actually a nasty weapon. You know, this is probably like if I had to talk about use. Let's do it this way. Let's let's put it like this. All right. So the Magnum actually is dangerous. You can two tap someone with a Magnum. I have been two tapped by it. Damn you, Mac. I think it was Mac or was it Max? One of you both in scrims literally two tapped me. Now I was ground walking like an idiot. I, I'm la I'm an old guy. I'm lazy. I'm literally the oldest guy at the highest level competition. I'm lazy. I'll ground walk when I can. And I got two tapped by this, and I was like, what? <laughs> and so. The problem with the Magnum is it's very much like the foul. By the time you got hit with the bullet, you realize how much damage you took, you already got hit by a second shot. And by the time you realize that, you might have died or you took way too much damage because a headshot with this does so much damage now. It got a damage buff, right? That helped the math substantially. Before, you would only really pick up the gold one because the gold one really only had that like two tap potential. Now, I believe you can do it with the purple one as well. So pick up a purple one and feel great about it as well, right? But how to use this weapon? You have to be able to peek with it, of course, like all these weapons, right? Most of these weapons. Because of how dangerous the AWP is and, and the M60, you have to head peek. And so with this weapon, you got to head peek. Uh, and so you got to hold behind something and be able to blind fire while using the crosshairs or looking and then firing, right? And be, you have to be able to do that so well that you can hit someone else who is head peeking. Now the difficult part is, is that the bullet travel speed's kind of slow. So if, for example, it's slow, way slower than AWP. So you have to be able to get used to that slower timing. But in the close to midis range where this gun does the most damage, that's not really that much of an issue, but know that that's something you have to be able to control. But really when you use this, if you're a beginner player, it's really just about the timing. Use the crosshairs, very simple. Fire, wait for the crosshairs to go up, Wait, then come back down, fire again. Okay, that's simple, really. You don't need to aim down the sight and look at the dot, like the crosshair, I mean, sorry, the zoom dot. Like, you don't need to look down the sight of the weapon. Just use the crosshair and put the target in the center of the crosshair, and that usually be good enough. It's not worth the risk of looking above the wall through that sight now when AWPs are so dangerous now, particularly. So you have to blind fire. So you literally hold your head as far as you can in the wall, Use the crosshair and guess where that guy's head's going to be and fire while you're behind a wall. Okay, that's how to use the weapon. Very simple. But I do think it would, like, if you are a master with this, I think it's up here, but it, it, I think it's more difficult to use than people really give it credit for. Uh, it does take, like, it takes practice to get used to the timing because you can't miss a shot. Once you start missing shots, ooh, it just, you start, you lose confidence and then it just all goes downhill from there, all right? I know from first-hand experience. All right, so we're gonna quickly go over the C-tier weapons because in all seriousness, you only pick these up if you're desperate, all right? But I will mention why these are here and I'll quickly tell you how you should use it. Most of these are head peeking, right? Because of how dangerous the op is and that's how strong the op is. Every time I mention every single weapon, the AWP comes up. That's how powerful it is, all right? Uh, so everyone says the M60 is cheesy, 
Well, honestly, the LP is super cheesy because it's stronger and it's just as easy to learn, all right? To at least learn to use efficiently. And it's that, <laughs> since peaking is so much more nerfed now, it's just, it's just that strong, all right? CX-4, slowest assault rifle time to kill in the entire game, all right? Which is why it's horrible. The rate of fire is slow. The only time this weapon is useful is if someone's flying in the air a mile away and you got a CX-4 because you can kill someone probably one box of ammo at even a mile away, all right? That's the only time this weapon is seriously used at any level where it should be used because you'll never kill anyone with this who's a good player. Like, period, all right? So how to shoot with it? One hand peek. The aim is so easy. There's no excuse not to one hand peek. The Uzis, oh man, I think these are at the bottom of the tier now, man. The Uzis used to be one of the best weapons in the game because they were the best at breaking build and they had a great time to kill. But now, unfortunately, they are dog water because there's not that much ammo in the game. If you didn't realize, the ammo feels like it's harder to come by in the newest evolving map, all right? Except in Metro, but everywhere else, it feels like you're kind of starved for ammo. And I bet you just like... Oh yeah, that's right. And because it, I, I do believe this, like the spawns with all the new buildings and all that are added, uh, like the, the the weapons and ammo are in kind of different places and more hidden places that, and you know, than they used to. And the ones that you know, it, it just feels like you get less loot when you're playing seriously on the whole map, all right? And so you're never getting enough ammo for the Uzis usually to use these on a serious level. Unfortunately, they don't break builds like, like you think they do on paper. And even though they have technically, theoretically, one of the fastest time to kills, like almost in the game, on paper, in reality, it just never works out, all right? Usually you get, you die way before you're able to kill someone with Uzis uh, because of how dangerous, again, all the other close range weapons are, but most importantly, because you have to ground walk in the close range, and that's bad, all right? And it takes skill to use. You have to be able to be, you have to be almost ambidextrous, right? Because using two hands, and you, it, it, there is recoil to control, but it's just, it's really not as good as you think. Uh, and I, I try. I even tried to use them yesterday, and just it failed me again. And I was like, "Man, like that's horrendous." So the Uzis, there's no special way to use these. You pretty much just have to practice your weak hand recoil. Usually, you're gonna have one hand that's gonna be really easy to aim with this, and then you gotta l learn the other hand. And I will. I would spend time on this. When these weapons were meta a while ago, I actually spent time on this. They were really fun to use. Now, unfortunately, they're at the bottom. They're just. It's not as great as you think. The 1911, not a seriously used weapon, but if you're hitting headshots, man, this thing you, you can gain respect because it does 40 plus damage per headshot. Like that's serious business, considering how easy it is to aim. The problem with this is that you have to be using this in prob like really close to close midish range, and you have to be head peeking. We know how dangerous head peeking is, and so you have to blind fire with it again. And you have to get used to how slow the bullet travel speed is. And that's, it's really kind of a weird bullet travel speed, just like the Magnum. And it's so different than like the assault rifles. So it's, it's definitely not worth, now it breaks build fast. I believe, don't quote me on this, but I believe it's two shots per build. So in theory, it can break build pretty fast. Um, but it just, it just doesn't do it, right? With lag and all that stuff that happens in the game, you're much better off breaking build with the MP9. Uh, and killing people with the MP9 than you are the 1911. So it, 1911, I wouldn't make fun of you if you're using it, as long as you're hitting your shots. Uh, but I might be making fun of you. I might be making fun of you if you're using 1911. But the recoil is easy to control now versus before, and it's less easy. It's it's um harder to choke the weapon. Before, if you shot it at the wrong fire rate too fast, it would choke the weapon, and it would be even slower. But they fixed that a little bit ago, so. It's not horrible to use, it's just you shouldn't be using it compared to all these other super dangerous weapons, right? PX4, very similar, same thing, you gotta peek. But on paper, this has one of the fastest time to kills in the game too. The problem is you need all headshots. And that's not easy to do or practical to do at all, even by the best players, pistol players in the world who I've seen duel each other in a private custom match, right? And so... Uh, they will not use the PX4 just because the aim is not that easy to do because you have to fire more shots, you have to hit more shots because the damage is lower, for example, than the, than the 1911. But if you're hitting the headshots, man, and you're shooting this as fast as possible, you can kill someone theoretically fast, but it, in theory, it doesn't happen practically, okay? So it's not a good weapon because it's not, it's just not practical. 
Same thing as the 1911. The P90, unfortunately, is horrendous and almost the worst SMG in the game because it has random recoil. What does that mean? You can't control it. It just jumps everywhere. And you just have to, like, just react to how it's moving and pray you're hitting your shots. And that's not good in this meta where you die in half a second. So it's not controllable recoil. It has 20 damage per shot and it has a fast, like it does have a fast firing rate. Uh, so it's it's it, on paper dangerous, but the problem is it's just random recoil. You got a head peek in the close range and it's really hard hitting your shots head peeking when you've got something that's jumping around with one hand. It's very hard to one hand with this thing and hit shots on a head peeker, okay? And that's why this weapon is not good. It's really not as good at breaking build as the MP9 kind of is. Uh, it does have a bigger clip, but like the MP9, which is, it just gets you what you need. So there's no reason for the P90 right now. There really isn't. And especially with the random recoil. I, if, even without the random recoil, I think this gun is still not overpowered and broken. All right? Like, it, it's just that bad now. Uh, 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 like Sammy, my competition partner, uh, we just won mixed doubles like you know, this last weekend. Like she used to main the P90 way back in the day before it got the random recoil and got nerfed to oblivion because of that. And now she still doesn't use the P90. Like that should tell you something. Someone used to main it still doesn't use it because of that. All right. So know that P90 bottom of the barrel, unfortunate. Uh, it wasn't. St I still didn't think it was like that great a broken weapon even back in the day but some people whine about it and here we are so now the ump this one's funny i think i'm dogging on this one a little too hard because it is reliable the, the recoil is not horrendous but the recoil is harder to control than the mp9 it does way less damage than mp9 it doesn't break build as good as the mp9 uh, it has i think now it actually has a slightly faster rate of fire than the MP5 from when I last checked a bit ago when they got like these buffs and nerfs that they really, I don't think, publicized. Uh, and so, very well at least. So it actually might be equivalent to break and build with the MP5, if not slightly a little better. Uh, but it's just, this is very similar to the MP5 in that it falls short, like when you're using it a lot of the time. Like it just... Almost, you almost killed the guy, but almost isn't good enough because you like it's all about winning or losing, dying or living. UMP just doesn't have that time to kill. It's got just an okay time to kill compared to the other SMGs. The only reason why the MP5 is up here, and honestly, I think I put the MP5 up too high. Maybe MP5 is like, actually, the MP5 is probably like right here. How about that? The UMP just the reason why the mp5 is up here versus the ump because on paper if you hit headshots with the mp5 it's got an extremely fast time to kill right on paper like you can kill really fast technically faster than the mp9 but that's its potential it's not what really is practical right and so the ump doesn't even have that so there's no reason to use that over the mp5 or the mp9 except that it has an easier recoil pattern so it, yes it's great if you just need someone to pick up that's reliable but you are watching this video because you want to get better at this game or you don't know how to get better at this game. I'm telling you, you don't need to put practice into this weapon. Don't rely on it. Spend time learning one of these other weapons. You're going to benefit. You're going to get a lot more kills. Your damage is going to go up every game. It's going to reward you for doing so, okay? So UMP, you have to head peek with it, just like all these other weapons, essentially. But even more so important now, right? Without dangerous. Okay. So we've gone through that. Uh, we've gone through literally all the weapons now on this tier list, okay? I, I literally told you why the weapon is good, how it's good in its niche. Every weapon has a niche now. How to? I literally told you how to use it and win with it. Like, I give you all my secrets. Like, no one else will do that for you. <laughs> like, I tell you how to use it. I give you the videos. I tell you how to win with it. Come kill me with it now. Like, it's just like, it, there's no excuse to not get better in game when I'm telling you how to use it. I'm showing you videos on how to use it and I'm willing to even show you, right? So know that I, in this guide, I have told you how to use every weapon. I told you why it's good. Don't break these, don't break these rules that we have. Okay, what do I mean by that? For example, I would still see some of my friends using P90s at the long range. I would still see some of my friends using MP5s at the long range. You gotta use these weapons the way I'm telling you to use them. Use them where they're most optimal, where they have the highest damage. Good players now are not just skilled in terms of game sense and 
uh, their aim. Now you have to understand where each weapon succeeds and where each weapon does not, right? For example, the close, close, close range, the point blank range, you pick a DT-11, you pick the sword. Slightly a few steps further away, a few feet further away, use the MP9 or maybe the MP5, right? Even further than that, or the, or the M10. Then you get a little further than that, you start using the AKM because that is where it's going to have a better damage, a better time to kill than the MP9 and the MP5. And then slightly more than that, you're going to want to use the foul because the foul has a better time to kill than the AKM at a little further range. And then once you get past that, and now we're talking mid to far range, you got to use an M60 or an AWP because those are the best weapons for killing anyone at long range. All right. So like you have to understand the range to use a weapon, what situations you have to use a weapon in, which is pretty much very simple. You have to peek with it or you or you die, <laughs> which is kind of funny. Uh, but even then, peeking is not the know-all be-all. It's not a winning strategy now anymore because of how easy it is to AWP. It wasn't even that broken before. Uh, and so now know that you have to understand each weapon, and this is why this guide exists, how to use each weapon, when to use each weapon, and then you have to know how to really shoot each weapon, all right? So otherwise, I hope this video helped you. If you disagree with me or have additional comments or helpful tips to help the community with, put them in the comments below. I'm sure a lot of people would love to read that and see that. You know, just leave it, leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that great stuff that YouTubers tell you. Thank you for spending this long time with me. Pink Ponage out. Have a great day.